Hey everyone, it's Mr. Veve, and this lesson is on defense from injury and illness, so we're looking at the immune system. Let's get right into it with our first key concept. Body systems work together to defend the body from injury. So let's look at this defense from injury. It all starts with a stimulus, which causes a response. So stimulus is information that has the potential to change an organism's behavior. You touch a hot stove, you immediately remove your hand from the stove, hopefully. So this all begins with the integumentary system, your skin. This is the first line of defense, and they have specialized cells that receive stimuli and send those signals to your brain through your nervous system that helps elicit a response of some kind. So those sensory neurons can send sensory information, which cause motor neurons to make you move. So that's kind of how it all works. Now the endocrine system is also involved here because the information that is received from the nervous system, well, the endocrine system is going to signal other systems to act potentially using hormones as messengers. And then the circulatory system is responsible for carrying those hormones from the endocrine system all around the body to those different target cells. So kind of as you can see uh, with injury here, the nervous and the endocrine system are the main ones here that we need to understand. Nervous system gets the signals, endocrine system sends a lot of signals in the form of hormones throughout the rest of the body. So this is a good look here at the fight or flight response which is the ultimate defense from injury here. Whenever a human or some sort of animal that has these sorts of uh, systems in place senses a threat, the brain is going to decide whether or not to stay and fight or to run away. Now, very interestingly, you can look on the right-hand side here and see a lot of the physical effects of a fight-or-flight response. That is an increase in heart rate, shaking, dilated pupils, tunnel vision, uh, flushed face. All of these things are designed to make that organism be able to get away or fight much better. You don't want to be sleepy if you have to run away really quickly. So let's get next, uh, right into with our next concept here. Uh, body systems help to prevent and fight off infections. So this is the defense from illness part. So let's look at the immune system and some of the parts of it here. We have white blood cells. These are mainly responsible for identifying and killing invaders. This is the whole idea of defending ourselves from illness. Now there are a lot of different types of white blood cells, not all of which you have to know in great detail, but I'm going to talk about a couple of them here. So first we have phagocytes, which you can see in the picture on the right hand side. These are the ones that eat uh, foreign cells or, or invaders, anything that is not self, as we would say. So when the phagocytes engulf those invaders, they are trying to figure out what it is so they can tell the B cells and the T cells what the invader was. Now the T cells, there's a couple of different types. There's helper T cells, which once they see what the invader is, they kind of help coordinate that whole response. In the right-hand picture here, you see a normal T-cell and a T-cell that's been infected with HIV. So you can see why somebody with HIV has a weakened immune response, because their helper T-cells are all uh, messed up here. The other type of T-cell that we look at are the killer T-cells, or sometimes called cytotoxic T-cells. These are the ones that bind to the antigens, which is the stuff that the uh, pathogen has and uh, they're going to be the ones that actually destroy those cells. And then what do the B cells do? Well, the B cells are responsible for making antibodies that bind to these pathogens. So the T cells and the B cells have slightly different functions here. Now, when we're defending ourselves from illness, we also have to understand the integumentary system, the skin, which is the first barrier or line of defense uh, that is supposed to keep out these invaders and the circulatory system is responsible for moving those white blood cells throughout the body to wherever those invaders get in. So if we want to look at a non-specific immune response here like inflammation, this is something everybody really understands pretty well, but you can see a little bit of the steps here that are involved. So when a tissue is injured, uh, either physically or chemically or something, something gets into your body that is not supposed to be there. What happens is you have capillaries that get a little bit wider, they get a little bit more permeable, and the white blood cells kind of migrate out of those blood vessels to the site where the injury is, causing that area to be um, tender and swollen. It causes you a little bit of pain. So whenever you see a little bit of heat, redness, tenderness, or swelling in a certain area, that means that an inflammatory response has taken place. So now let's move to a specific immune response here. 
So there's four steps here. So the first thing that happens with your body in a specific immune response is that it identifies the antigen or the protein that's on the pathogen. Now, if you see on the right there, the antigens are little um, kind of ID tags sticking out of the top of a virus or some other sort of pathogen, which kind of identify what that pathogen is. So then what happens next is T cells destroy those specific pathogens and then the B cells produce antibodies that bind to those antigens and stop them from infecting new cells. So you have a nice coordinated response here with the B cells and the T cells. And finally, both those B and T cells um, store the information that they just gained as memory cells so that in case that same pathogen ever comes in again, they'll be ready with a coordinated response. Now this whole process is called active immunity. That is what uh, humans do very, very well. Now, uh, moving on a little bit here, allergies, people wonder about this all the time. Allergies are what happens when your body reacts to something that is normally harmless. Um, pollen is a good example, and even food allergies. These things are normally pretty harmless, but your body can be sensitive to them in a couple of different ways. And uh, in a very extreme cases, what can happen with your inflammatory response, especially with these food allergies, is that inflammatory response can be so severe that it leads to anaphylaxis, meaning it's not just a shortness of breath or kind of a swelling of the nasal passage or something like that. It can actually cause a person to stop breathing, which is a very, very serious response to that invasion.